uh, the amendment be disagreed to, and I give the call to the member for Jager Jager. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Well, the NDIS is such an important part of our country, and it should provide people with disability and the wider community with the certainty that they will have access to the support they need. But under this government, the NDIS is not operating as it should to improve the lives of people with disability, their families and carers. Under this government, it has become a bureaucratic labyrinth that leaves too many people and families despairing about decisions they don't understand. It's left participants exposed and at risk. So this bill is being introduced after multiple cases of neglect and abuse of participants, including the disturbing failures that led to the death of Anne-Marie Smith 16 months ago. It's welcome that it will partially implement recommendations of the Robertson Review. But I worry that given this government's track record, that it just won't be enough. Deputy Speaker, I talked about people with disability being exposed because of the neglect of this government. And at the moment, they remain far too exposed because of this government's failures to get the COVID vaccine rollout right. We know that people with disability are among the most vulnerable to COVID-19. We've seen in the UK where it's estimated people with COVID, uh, people with disability made up to, uh, up to two thirds of all deaths from COVID. And with that knowledge, you would think that vaccinating people with disability and the people around them would be an absolute priority for this government. And yet figures that we saw just on the weekend show that just 26.9% of NDIS participants aged over 16 who were in phase 1A or 1B of the vaccine rollout are fully vaccinated. In comparison, 29.6% of the general Australian adult population is now fully vaccinated. So the general population is more fully vaccinated than this vulnerable at-risk group that the federal government is responsible for. Overall, 67.3% of NDIS participants in group homes, that's about 22,000 people, have had one uh, dose of their vaccine and 51.9% have had two doses. These were people who are in phase 1A of the rollout. They are people living in group homes. The government knows where they're living. You have access to that data. Why is it that they are not vaccinated yet? And of course, this extends across to the workforce of the approximately 164,660 people in our country's disability workforce. 55.6% have had their first vaccination and 36.7% have had two doses. Deputy Speaker, this is leaving people with disability dangerously exposed, both on a personal level where they're not vaccinated, but also where the workers who come into their houses, who have to visit multiple houses, are also not vaccinated. And a time in our community here in Melbourne where once again, we are seeing case numbers rise, we are worried about the spread of this virus. It is just not good enough. It is neglect. We also see the Morrison government leading, leaving disability providers to struggle through this pandemic. I've been in touch with providers in my electorate recently who are unsure if they will make it through to the other side of the COVID pandemic, particularly some of those who provide day services and so cannot operate during lockdowns. And we have no national plan from the government to support these sort of providers. They want to do the right thing by the people with disability, the families that they support, but they can't operate during lockdown. No plan from this government, no sense of how they will be supported to get to the other side. And of course, again, that leaves my community exposed, not just at the moment, but in the future where once again, once we get through lockdowns, we want these services to be there for people with disability to access and to use. These are people, these are services that are trying to do the right thing but they are being left exposed. They are being left vulnerable by this Morrison government because of a botched vaccine rollout. People with disability are not vaccinated. Carers are not vaccinated and people are at risk when they just should not be. Deputy Speaker, of course, it didn't take a pandemic for this government to neglect people with disability. This bill seeks to implement changes to better support vulnerable or at risk NDIS participants after multiple in incidents of abuse, 
neglect and death within the system. These deaths should have been preventable. People like Anne-Marie Smith were victims of bureaucratic red tape and a bad culture within the NDIS. The case of Anne-Marie Smith is harrowing. Her story just should not have happened. 54-year-old Anne-Marie Smith was an Adelaide NDIS participant. She died on April the 6th, 2020, a severe septic shock, multi-organ failure, severe pressure sores and malnutrition. Her NDIS package included six hours of support per day, and it's since been reported that she only received two hours of care and was confined to a cane chair 24 hours a day for more than a year. These circumstances should not have occurred under this government's watch, under any government's watch. Her carer has now pleaded guilty to manslaughter. And since her death, the South Australian government created a safeguarding task force to re-examine current gaps in oversight and safeguarding for people with disability. And at a federal level, we've had the Robertson Review Report, which has looked at the regulation of providers and was handed down 12 months ago and did make a number of recommendations. Disappointingly, that review did not have statutory powers, the submissions were not made public, and there was no formal consultation or wider sector engagement. And this is again where we see a pattern from this government where it comes to its treatment of people with disability and the people who advocate with them, for them, and, the, and people with disability themselves. It does not consult with them. It does not ask them about what they want in their life and how they want to be safe and how best to achieve that. So while obviously the, the measures in this bill are welcome, uh, I share the concerns of disability advocates around how they will be implemented, and I urge the government to consult with people with disability, with disability advocates and the sector more broadly about how to best implement these changes and how to make sure people with disability are safe uh, under the NDIS. Of course, I talked about lack of consultation, and the biggest example we've seen of that recently has been the government blindsiding Australian with disabilities with their plan for independent assessments. Now, that plan has now rightly been scrapped. But again, what a failure of this government really goes to the heart of how they see people with disability, how they see the NDIS, that they would uh, consider implementing this sort of system without consulting with the people who it is going to affect the most. And I can tell you how much worry, uh, how much severe concern it caused in my electorate from people with disability, from the families of young children with disability who have fought so hard for their children to have the support they need and who were worried, very, very worried about what this system would mean for what that would look like in the future. They raised their concerns, they raised their voices over a number of months, and for months and months, this government just did not listen. People with disabilities should not have to prove they have a disability. That's not the point of the NDIS. They shouldn't have to go to a stranger and undergo a ticker box exercise to prove their disability. That is not the point of the NDIS. The Morrison government does not support the aims of the NDIS if that's what they think the NDIS is all about, because it's not. It's about making sure that people have the support they need to live the life that they should. So again, it's positive that these assessments won't go ahead, but a failure of the government that they caused so much stress, so much heartache, they took up so many hours on the part of people with disability and their advocates before they finally saw the light. And of course, we don't know where the government will go next on any of this, as they keep telling us with, without providing the evidence that the scheme as it is, is unsustainable. Well, again, I urge the government, if they're making or thinking of making further changes to the NDIS, they must consult and consult genuinely with people with disability, with their advocates across the country. Deputy Speaker, another uh, example of uh, the government not meeting the needs of people with disability in my electorate has come to me recently, and that's the severe lack of affordable, accessible housing for people with disability and for their families. Grace Glarbick lives in my electorate and her son Elijah has a disability. And yet a lack of appropriate, affordable, accessible housing that meets her family's needs means she's currently bathing Elijah outdoors or in their kitchen. That should not be the case in this country. Now Grace is passionate about fixing this situation for her son and for her family and for other families. 
but this should not rely on Grace's passion and her determination. I'm very proud that Labor's committed to a $10 billion fund to build more affordable housing, housing that will be accessible. But it is a massive failure of this Morrison government that they have not done more to provide affordable, accessible housing for people with disability and for their families. Because in this country, in my electorate, that should not be the option for you, that you have to bathe your son in the kitchen or outside because you can't find an accessible, affordable option to live in. It just should not be. And I urge the Morrison government to uh, do more to provide accessible, affordable housing for people with disability and for their families. Deputy Speaker, the, the theme that runs through all of this is a tired government that does not care about genuine policy reform. A tired government that does not seem to care about delivering services for people, services that are safe, that safeguard vulnerable people, services that are built on what people with disability, what people with disability and their families tell them they need in their lives. This is a government that spent eight years cutting funding to vital services. They are trying to scare us around a, a black hole in the NDIS without providing the evidence for what they're talking about. It's another scare campaign on top of a scare campaign that they're running for people with disability and their families. This government doesn't seem to care about the lives of people with disability. It doesn't seem to care about the lives of their families and their carers. In a pandemic, at a time when we are all on the edge, feeling more stressed, more strung out, having to dig deeper than ever before, this government is not protecting people with disability. It has not ensured that Australians with a disability are fully vaccinated. At a time when we are seeing outbreaks all over the country, people with disability are still vulnerable. People who work with people with disability are still vulnerable and not vaccinated. It is a failure of the Morrison government that these people have been left in this dangerous, precarious situation at this time. So this bill, is welcome. It does some of the things this government should do, but it by no means does all of the things this government should do. And I urge them to act. I urge them to, I urge the Morrison government to listen to people with disability, listen to their advocates, to make sure that people with disability are safeguarded, both now during the pandemic with vaccines, more broadly through the NDIS, that we know the safeguards are in place so that we never ever see another tragic case like Anne Marie Smith. And more broadly, listen to people with disability, listen to their advocates about how you shape the NDIS going forward, because they know what is best in their lives and it is not uh, the cost cutting, mean spirited options put forward by this government. Thank you. The question is that the amendment be disagreed to and I give the call to the member for Mallee.